So what I've got here are two um, Senecor SC61 waveform analyzers. Um, this one right here is one that I've had for probably at least three years, if not longer. It's been in some of my videos at times. And this one here I purchased almost exactly a year ago and just threw it on the shelf. I see things like this and buy it and throw it on a shelf somewhere and with the intention in the future of um, repairing it. It was being sold as parts not working and got a heck of a deal and only paid $9.99 plus the shipping which of course as heavy as this thing is the shipping was 30 bucks but um, a couple of very easy minor fixes and this one here is working flawlessly now and back to this one here I paid a lot more money for this because it was supposedly fully functional and it turns out that it really wasn't and I've known this almost since the time that I've purchased it um, I've had a triggering problem with it to where the only trigger mode that I could use was the TV mode and I could only use the I could only uh, I think up to maybe 10 kilohertz is all the higher I could use this thing that was it and anything more than that and I couldn't I couldn't get the TV mode to trigger and I noticed that this one here is the same way for whatever reason it's I think that's just the way these scopes are I don't really know a whole lot about them or the history of them but anyways now that I've got the second one here that works perfectly and I've had as much as a uh, 10 megahertz precision source connected it and it triggers perfectly I decided that this would be a perfect opportunity to um, start swapping boards around of course there's two boards that have to do with the triggering there is a trigger trigger logic board which is this board right here and then the trigger input board is this one right here and I started out even though I kind of thought it was a trigger input I swapped out the trigger logic board first and it made no difference at all and then I swapped out the trigger input board and sure enough the problem went to this oscilloscope the exact same problem and so this here is the original again this is the original one that I had that I've had in my videos for several years now that had the triggering problem but since I swapped the board out that triggering problem has gone away so let me just uh, show you the difference here between the two scopes I think I've got all the uh, time base and everything all set to the same so let me flip my little oscilloscope calibrator on that's it approximately one megahertz it's slightly less than one megahertz and anyways as you can see this now triggers perfectly fine at a one megahertz of course that's with the other trigger board and I can use I can I'm on the auto mode now if I switch over to the normal mode same thing and I can rotate around the trigger level and lose that triggering and bring it back on the normal triggering and also if I switch over to auto same thing I can rotate the level the trigger level and lose the trigger in both directions positive and negative direction so this is functioning exactly as it should and here's what happens on TV and like I said this is on both of these the TV separates some of the signals I'm not totally certain what it does I really never been a TV repair technician but as you can see you don't get it doesn't trigger on TV and that was a problem that I had with this scope with the other trigger input I had to use the TV trigger mode so anything over 10 kilohertz I couldn't use a scope on because it simply would not trigger on the waveform like it does there now, <clears throat> now let me switch over to the other scope which was working perfectly fine up to 10 megahertz until I pulled the uh, trigger input board out of this one and I'll show you what I get here okay that's on I'm on the TV mode and it is actually trying to kind of half trying to trigger 
but not all the time. It kind of comes and goes. I did notice that on the other scope too. But anyways, that's on the TV mode it does that. But then on the auto mode, I am turning the trigger level right now. There's full plus, full minus, slowly turning it and there's no response at all. If I flip it over to normal, my trace goes away because there's no triggering at all. I'm full minus, slowly rotating, zero, slowly rotating trigger level to full plus. As you can see, no triggering at all on the normal scale. Now I'm back on the TV and again, you can get you can get the scope to get the waveform to change like almost like it's trying to trigger but it will not trigger on the uh, TV mode other than maybe just just barely almost trigger one spot right at the center but not really what you consider trigger mode so I've definitely got a problem on that particular trigger board and I'm not going to do it today, but and I'll probably rather release this video tonight. I'll probably wait until I actually have the problem resolved and then I'll roll out into one video. But that's definitely the board right there with the problem. So somewhere on there I've got an issue. I just need to find out where. So I just this is gonna be a little bit of an introduction on what I'm doing with this SC61 or both of these. And I'll be back when I find the problem on that board. Well, I've got this trigger input board out and I've started doing some testing. I've already gone through and using a multimeter doing a preliminary check on all of the diodes and they all at least um, check normal with a multimeter. If I can't find anything wrong, I can maybe go from there. But I started checking some of the transistors on here and I've got two right here that are um, JFETs and the back one here tests good with my Cricut tester. I'll flip this on and I'll show you. It actually shows two good spots. Now if I go to the other one connect it up real quick but I'm rotating that around to every position. Now these are the identical JFETs. One's just spun around from the other so it should have shown a good spot somewhere on the end channel side and essentially I'm getting nothing. Now it's kind of a tight fit around this electrolytic capacitor so what I'll do next is I'll desolder this since obviously I'm showing a possibility of a failure I'll desolder that JFET and then check this with it out of circuit and see if it still shows bad I'll be back okay I've got that JFET unsoldered um, turns out it was good um, apparently I was just was unable to get the one lead on there correctly around that one electrolytic capacitor so we'll move on from here I'll solder that back in and we'll go on well I uh, ended up getting this repaired now I, what I did is I cheated a little bit I was having a hard time finding those ECL chips that I suspected was bad on that trigger board so I had a eBay seller that I'd had um, several of his circuit boards in my wish list for quite a while. I'd been tracking them for the SC61 and I made him a deal on, he has two of each one of the boards that's in these oscilloscopes. I made him a deal on one of each one of those, made him an offer and he accepted them. So basically I received those boards and popped this one in and it works just fine now I've got see I got the triggering on the auto mode and I can adjust the trigger level 
and it can go out of trigger and back in trigger either direction and then I can flip that over to normal and same thing out of trigger back in out of trigger back in just as it should I've got my little 10 megahertz source on here or reference or whatever you want to call it and you see the frequency counter is dead on although if you look closely at the trace on this this needs a little bit of the scope itself needs a little bit of adjustment um, where this is set up that should be pretty much these traces should pretty much be centered on each one of those graticals the whole way across you can see they're not now my other scope over here I went through the calibration process on it previously and it is so anyways that took care of the problem of course like I said I cheated on that a little bit but since this is and this is a couple of weeks after the original the first few parts on this video and in the meantime I've tracked down some of these ECL chips made an offer from a uh, seller on eBay and one of the, it, I guess I, didn't, I should say I didn't have a hard time finding these but either either from Chicom sources that you figure were fakes or real ones like these from a US seller that's reputable but they wanted five dollars each for them. I, was gonna, I wasn't gonna pay five dollars each I only paid maybe a little bit more than that for this entire board but well this is the old board but anyways um, I made an offer to the seller I noticed that these had been listed since 2009 so they've been there for six years and nobody bought any so I made her an offer on six of them that she accepted so I'm not going to say what it was but it was well below considerably less than five dollars a chip so now what I'm going to do I'm not going to pull this thing back apart I'm going to pull it back off at some point and do the calibration procedure so that it's a good usable scope and for the most part it is just a little bit of tweaking is all it needs but what I am going to do I'm going to pull these two chips out of here now and I really don't have much knowledge on ECL I did a little bit of reading up on it and eh, it just didn't interest me enough to become an ECL expert although I do have another oscilloscope I just purchased a Hitachi that is filled with these ECL chips I may end up having to become an expert but I'm going to re what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two and use these as a reference and I'm going to use my little um, curve tracer that I got and my switcher and do comparison testing back to back and see if I can't get a difference in signature from one of these which I suspect to be bad and the known supposedly known good reference so that'll be the next step um, I'll do that in a separate video but I just wanted to show that it's back and running and just essentially needs calibrated I originally purchased this scope to repair and then sell I don't know if I'm going to do that or not I kind of like these now I've got two of them. The only thing I don't like about them is the fact that if I want to measure any DC voltages, i got to have a special probe because you've got your little DC volt in banana probe there that goes before the um, whatever the resistor and the capacitance is that they have in line with that. So that's one thing I don't like. I won't be able to probably test DC voltages with it but or at least not read it out on the meter but that's not that big of a deal I do have one set of probes that came with this one I'd like to track down another set but they're usually expensive I'm not paying big money for probes for a oscilloscope that's 40 years old I also like to find a set of schematics for these I don't have schematics for these two oscilloscopes so if anybody knows of a source and yeah I already seen this the ones online that people want 30 40 dollars for I'll be damned if I pay $30 or $40 for a copy of a schematic for an oscilloscope that's 40 years old or getting heading towards, well, 35 years old. That's just not going to happen. So, anyways, um, I guess I'll just wrap this up here and then one of my other videos I'll probably do on actually testing those ECL chips and see how that works out. So, that'll be it for that.